friends, welcome back to another vlog. Sorry about the lighting, it is dark. It is past six o'clock now. Um, but I really wanted to start this video because I'm reading books and I know I'm gonna forget my thoughts on them if I don't start the video. But I am, um, I'm really exhausted. We had friends in town last weekend, um, which was really, really nice, but you just forget how much people can do in a day when they're not unwell, so. It was a lot, but um, I'm back at work this week and just sort of surviving. I got my hair done and they cut my fringe too short. Something's not right. But um, I read last weekend over the weekend Study for Obedience by Sarah Byrne Stein. Um, this was up for the Booker and it says Grant, her best young novelist of 2023. I hated this, going to be honest didn't get on board it was so cerebral it, was, it really wasn't the right time to be reading it I guess because it was like when I was reading it finishing it when we had friends in town and it just isn't the kind of like easy breezy pick it up on the tram kind of book it was it's about this young woman who goes to stay with her brother in this unnamed northern country it felt like maybe somewhere in eastern Europe or I, I really don't know it was like very agriculturally driven farmland small village but her brother did a lot of work like and would travel a lot she came to be basically his servant like we don't have any concept of yeah geography nor temporality like you don't really understand when or where this is set um and strange things start happening around the town like animals are dying and people are getting sick and the dog gets has a phantom pregnancy and everyone sort of blames it on this outsider woman which i guess is trying to be an allegory for like immigration or um nationalism but it just was so tedious to read the writing style and it's not a long book and the font is really quite large but it's all through it's through like her train of thought basically like a stream of consciousness type of thing as we watch her and then her brother becomes very unwell and I think there was a glimmer of something in about 10 pages about care it's really sort of a bit wonky uh, but it didn't it didn't pull it off for me like I kind of hated this so that's a shame book of books can be a hit or miss so that was a no but then I read Vladivostok Circus by Alyssa Shua Dusapin and she is a I want to say I think she's Korean like French Korean she's lived a really interesting life like she's I think was born in France um has Korean heritage and then also lived in Switzerland I think and somewhere else and her first two books which I've read all I've read everything that's been translated I've read The Winter in Sokcha the Pachenko Parlor and now this and those both those two books are set in and around South Korea and the Pachenko Parlor has a lot about Japan as well and they're both quite strange inward looking young female protagonists on these sort of lost journeys and this felt like perfectly in keeping with that theme but I think this might be my favorite of hers so this is about a young costume designer who leaves Brussels She's kind of estranged from her dad and she breaks up with her boyfriend to go to this circus in rural Russia where her dad coincidentally spent time at the start of his academic career. And she goes there to design costumes for this trio of performers who perform this act called the Russian Bar, which I actually want to look up videos of what that is, but it sounds like a very death defying aerial act that involves like two strong bases and one person that like flips up in the air and lands on very thin pieces of board. Um, and we watch her as she tries to sort of get herself in, into it's like the circus is on the off season so it's just her the director and these three performers living in the big top sort of trying to work out how they all fit together they all come with different stories and tragedies and grief but it felt so escapist to me because the geography and the experience of, of these this book is so different like so wildly different from anything i've ever known i have a really interesting and fascina fascination in circus history and the carnival and Romany Traveller and like all of those different communities that make up that like nomadic performing life but I haven't found many books about it that I've really loved and this one I think did the atmosphere of the circus life really well it talked about that naivety involved in facing death like every night they get up and perform these things um that are 
so wildly dangerous for the sake of like art like it feels like quite a frivolous frivolous confrontation with death if that makes sense like not that the art not art isn't frivolous in the sense that I believe it's essential but like they are, they're risking their life for something that is just performance and I think that's that was just like really interesting and to ponder on throughout this book and it's touched on very lightly and it still feels like this otherworldly experience even though this book is, is totally set in reality the circus setting deals with those themes that are like quite heavy and esoteric in a way that just I really really liked and I think she did that in Winter in Sokcho as well which is about Sokcho which is a town that's really close to the North Korean border and the character ponders that conception of border and nationality and um nationalism really well so really really enjoyed this and I think a great contrast to um study for obedience that was trying to answer those big questions but felt like in a way that was just so on the nose and drawn out so an interesting comparison actually the other book i wanted to talk about i haven't read yet but i did receive in a beautiful parcel um melena here on youtube who is a dutch booktuber i will link her channel down below she um reads a lot of classics and she's just started new she also has chronic illness and she talks about that sometimes she's just launched at her online bookshop which is really cool she's sourcing secondhand um english titles new english titles and some dutch titles sort of based around her love of classics and some of the books that she really enjoys so it's like quite a curated collection and she offered to send me a book and firstly the packaging is gorgeous it came like in tissue paper she's got like a sunflower as her logo and in a beautiful bag with my name on it um and i chose a second hand copy of a room of one's own this is the vintage like feminism short text i have read this book in the past as a teenager but i haven't read it in such a long time and i also haven't read i just haven't read any wolf in such a long time like that was a very much like a when i was studying literature at school kind of book and i'm really excited to have this small copy of it and be able to underline it i think it has so much to say about um women who write and sort of people talk about it um as having some allegory for illness and creativity and producing work in a space that feels confined and feels like with parameters so yeah i'm really intrigued to pick this up again and i'm so happy to receive a beautiful secondhand copy of it so i will link Melina's shop down below and her instagram and if you are based in the netherlands then please go and support her because we love chronic illness girlies doing their thing and pursuing businesses that they want to make successful so that was really cool the other thing i wanted to talk to you guys about is um that i've restructured my patreon i know lots of you over here go support me over there and that's really cool it's not an obligation or a sort of request it's just um a space where i do more of my writing work and you know put out content that i don't want to be fully public i think that when you spend a bit of time on the internet and experiencing some bad things on here you tend to want to guard some of your personal stuff so um that's a space where i make a podcast with tom every month which is really cool called books with my boyfriend and we talk about reading and then like normally a big not big but like <laughs> this past month we did a rant about saltburn and julia fox but in the past we spoke about sort of we did like a deep dive into doppelganger by naomi klein and talked a lot about palestinian liberation we've spoken about a lot about climate change and the kind of stuff tom does in his um work he's a uh, researcher phd researcher and studies climate change so he often brings a lot of those topics to the conversation we talk about news cultural stuff films um and that's really cool and then i've just switched off i used to write a weekly newsletter but I've switched to like an audio solo podcast format. It's about 15 to 20 minutes and I talk about, yeah, books. And then what's on my mind? Like this week I talked about that idea of like your life only has to make sense to you. And it's really nice to engage with people and we have like back and forth conversation. And I post books and people will tell me what they think I should read next. And it's just a really lovely space and I wanted, I'm not very good at promoting it or shouting it out, but... I wanted to because there's lots of new faces on here so yeah that's my chat about that 
And in terms of what I'm reading next, I don't know. I fin I've read um, the circus book really fast in like 24 hours. So now I feel a bit like, where do I go? What do I do? I want to read something lighthearted, easy breezy, but still a substance. Basically, I just want to read that again. So I'm going to look through my shelves this afternoon, this evening, and pick something. And then we'll see where we go from that. I also need to start a new audio book. It's all going on. New book. New day, new books. Um, at the weekend, Tom and I are celebrating our seven year anniversary, which is kind of crazy. Um, we're not big, we are anniversary people kind of, we're not Valentine's people because our anniversary is so close um, and anniversaries feel a lot more special to me personally, but we're just going, we're doing like little nice things across the weekend. Um, we wanted to go away, but we've decided to save our pennies, hopefully for a bigger trip this winter. Um, but we are, yeah, going to go out for a really nice meal and then we honestly just want to spend time sitting next to each other and doing our hobbies because that's what we enjoy to do on the weekend. So we've scheduled in some time for that and go out for a nice coffee and buns and do our reading in a cafe and then cook a delicious meal at home on Friday night. And yeah, just like nothing out of the ordinary, but just nice to be celebrating with each other and like have a weekend all for ourselves, you know, not seeing friends or doing anything else. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm sure I will include some clips of us probably getting dressed into nice outfits and hitting the town for approximately one and a half hours before I get too tired and need to come home. But it'll be nice nonetheless. And I'll chat to you then. Hey friends, well, <laughs> my hair is a real representation of the week that I've had. It's Friday night, I just lit all my candles for the evening. I'm gonna go and do the washing up, Tom is out at the pub. Um, and I just wanted to chat, I feel really rough, just like swinging between nausea, like you know that like makes your mouth feel weird and diarrhea, if I'm honest, for no reason, just absolutely no rhyme or reason. So that's been the last 24 hours. Um, I, yeah, just makes it really hard to work. I was just chatting to an internet friend about this, like when you have to, I don't know, work through such visceral symptoms, it feels like really like you're being unkind to yourself, but you also don't really have a choice. Um, what was I gonna say? I just have on those days, especially where just like everything is bugging me. Like I've got this breakout on my chin, it, it's bugging me, my hair, it's like hurting, this jump is it. Do you know what I mean? Like where you honestly would just love to unzip the back of my mo body and crawl out and just be an entity not existing in a physical form. Like it's just, ugh. it's like I'm making my own skin crawl. So that's the vibe. And then I was knitting on a on that hat. That's nearly done for my friend, but I need to start decreasing, which involves head energy. Wow, it looks horrible right now. Can you you can't really see the colour? It's like a two I think it's they don't um Rose do like a they describe their stuff in like quite literal senses. They don't for a second I thought I'd lost stitches. They don't really talk about the technical terms, I th but I think this is a two color brioche. It's so squishy, um, but it kind of got a bit messed up up here. And so then I was getting upset about that. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna cast on something new. I really want to make some giant scrunchies with big ribbons, but that involves, I can't really find a pattern for it. And I used to like reverse engineer it from a picture on Pinterest, which down to NGs to do. So then I was like, you know what? Let me just pull some random yarn out of stash and make something for a baby because who won't find joy in knitting tiny things for babies? Like I'll just unknit this this weekend. So I started a little green and pink stripey bun. Also not my baby. I feel like if you just stumbled upon this video, you're gonna be like, what the fuck? Two people in my life are having babies. My friend who I'm knitting this for is having a baby like next week, which is wild. I got her a pair of vintage Oshkosh dungarees at the, um, the IJ Hall in last weekend, so I'm gonna put a bundle together to give to my mum who's coming to visit next weekend and she can then put it in the post 
down to where they live. So yeah, it's like a striped, uneven striped green is left over from the bonnet I made for Rebecca's baby. I don't know if I showed the final thing off, but you'll see it on Instagram. And the pink is really old. It's 100% Peru Peruvian Highland wool from Silkalana. I was a bit worried that it's not soft enough, but I think it's fine. The green is um, merino, but this, I would buy more of this for Carl. Lana wool it's really soft and I actually coincidentally just was watching a knitting podcast and the person was talking about this yarn that they had made like a zip sweater with comboed with a mohair and it looked really nice but anyway just give me the back of the bonnet I think it's gonna be really sweet and just like a nice mindless project that will bring me some satisfaction to just like start and finish something you know I can't go over how rough I look Jesus Christ um reading wise I'm listening to what is it even called, Anna? I don't know. This mystery thriller book that's like the second in a series, but I don't think you need to read them in order. It's called The Mystery Guest. I think when it's by Nita Prose. And I know their first book was kind of very popular. I think it was just called The Maid. It's about this woman who works as a maid. She like, her grandma was a maid and um, she works at this like big old kind of fancy hotel. And on a night of a big, um, celebration this author this famous mystery writer has come to reveal a big secret and he drops dead and now it's like very kitsch and a little bit cozy but honestly it's just like mindless listening which is exactly what i was in the mood for so i've been listening to that a bit we're now like doing the whole police procedural let's you know be horrible to women who don't you don't think know what they're doing It's Monday, uh, Tom and I celebrated our anniversary this weekend, like I said, I was feeling a bit more poorly than I wanted to be, but such is life, so we just rested all day, well Tom did lots of chores, which was very kind, um, on Saturday, and then we went out for a curry, which was really delicious, and went to Dilly and Camille, which is like a homeware I think it's German, it's like a chain of homeware stores that sells like lots of satisfying tiny little objects. Um, Tom had a voucher that he gets from his work every Christmas, so we went and spent that. Got a new pot to make chai in, and lots of candles, and new oven mitts, and that's the kind of wildlife we're living these days for our anniversary. And then on Sunday we met some friends for brekkie, just at like a local coffee spot that we love to go to. That was really nice. Then we ran some errands together. Does anyone else love running errands with their friends? Like I find it so funny and grown up where I'm like, oh, do we all need to pop to the supermarket? <laughs> like it's just nice having neighborhood friends to do that with. So we did that and it started to rain. It ended up being quite an icky 
Sunday weather-wise. So we just hung out at home, did some knitting, and yeah, was a good, was a nice weekend actually. I'm still feeling pretty unwell, like just constantly nauseous, which is really annoying when food is your main joy in life and you can't appreciate it. Um, but this morning I just went to physio as I normally do on a Monday and uh, I wanted to report back on the books. I read a whole book this weekend and it was so fun. I read Greta and Valden by Rebecca K. Riley. This is a New Zealand published book that just um, was put out in the UK by Penguin. I think it comes out next week maybe, depends when you're watching this, but around the 8th or 9th of Feb I think it's coming out. Um, and it's sort of an extended family saga following a Maori, Catalonian, Russian family living in Auckland. Um, and it's really funny and really larger than life sort of cast of characters, but you focus in on these two young, like in their early adulthood, these two queer siblings, one's just quit academia, one's trying to make academia work. They had their dads like quite an, a well-known I think physicist or maybe biologist um, in Auckland, like at the university. And they are both sort of making their way through life, working out what to do with their relationships, their ill-fated love, but it was so funny. And I do not say that lightly because I do not find a lot of books funny, like even ones that people say are funny. I often don't laugh out loud at like things on the page. I'm more likely to laugh at like an audio book, but written word, takes a lot for me to laugh and I was laughing every chapter of this like it was so dry and witty I think there's maybe a a common humor there between Britain and um and New Zealanders so it was just really enjoyable like it, it did have you know sad moments and trauma and complicated parts of it but it was so I don't know the the family dynamic was sort of only mildly dysfunctional in a in a fun way you know it wasn't like trauma plot and their sort of escapades across New Zealand and going to we end up in Argentina and Barcelona and we follow them like each flip-flopping between them in the chapters so it reads really quickly and they have a really close bond these siblings which I found really beautiful and heartening to read about it's not something I experienced but I know a lot of my friends who have super close families would find it really relatable and joyful but even though I, that's not my experience I still really loved reading about this huge larger than life sort of almost Wes Anderson-esque set of people who are just muddling through but like deeply care and love each other but it didn't feel too earnest or sentimental um it has a sort of really interesting backstory about sort of immigration from Russia which I had never read about in relation to sort of queerness and this the like um, father figure who realizes it's just not safe to raise um, queer kids in in a place like that and sort of yeah yeah I just really liked how detailed and descriptive it was of all these things but it didn't feel overly floral it always came back to the heart of the character which I really enjoyed but yeah just such a good book gonna have a book hangover from it for sure um, it was just what I was looking for after reading. Uh, like it was similar to um, Vladivostok Circus where it was just sort of fun but not fluffy and it was light hearted but not too sentimental and I don't know it just really hit the the stride that I've been wanting to read at the moment like I really can't cope with anything too heavy or complicated or dark or close to my own life like I just really want to escape into books and because I don't really read fantasy like it's quite hard to find that sweet spot but both of these books I've read this week have done that for me and so I mean claps to me I guess for choosing them but if you have any other books that go along those lines I would love to hear them because that's exactly what I need more of. I think I'm probably going to wrap up this vlog now for you it's a little short maybe for me <laughs> maybe not for you but uh, my mum's coming into town next weekend and I'm really excited we're just gonna chill have a massage hang out go book shopping so perhaps I will have more to show you in the next video in terms of new acquisitions see you guys later bye